Well, welcome back to the channel, everybody. It is February, and we have another challenge. It's like we're having one a month or something. It's crazy, I know. You're crazy. You're crazy, man. You're crazy. So, I, I'll be honest with you. I have struggled with this challenge. I've been rough turning a bunch of pieces, uh, trying to get something that says, hey, this is what I want to be. Finally found it. And it's this piece of mesquite here. As you can see, it's just been rough turned. But I know what this is going to be. I think it's going to be awesome. And I'm going to do something with mesquite I don't see very many people do. So let's just get into it. I got this mesquite off the last site I worked in the oil field, right before I got laid off, so <laughs> kind of ironic. But anyways, uh, we're going to get to it. Now see my tool rest bouncing around. That's what sucks about the Harbor Freight Lay there now and then you got to keep tightening up that nut. If you're wondering, making my tenon. And yes, there's a reason I'm putting it on this side. All right, I had to pause for a minute, go sharpen up my carbide. This mesquite is some very dense wood. I want to do my finishing passes with traditional tools, but I don't want to sit there and go back and sharpen a whole bunch. So I'm going to do most of my roughing work with a carbide, if not all of it, because my carbide's actually giving me pretty good cuts on this wood. I'm glad I decided to go with the tenon. <laughs> And I did dovetail it, I forgot to do it, uh, I forgot to show it on camera, but it does have a slight dovetail on it. And I'm just going to add this super glue here, because we got some nice little cracky wackies. But honestly, with the tenon, I don't think it's as big of a deal, since you're squeezing down on the wood. It's not like you're going to separate them. So, give that a few minutes to set up, get it on the chuck, and make something cool. You know what, this is some bulk material and removal, so I'm going to try to get some practice in with the bowl gouge. Might as well take the opportunity, right? Leave a comment if you see anything I'm doing wrong. I know the basics, you're supposed to ride the bevel, match your angle, this and that, but I think it's just more doing than knowing right now for me. Back to my babies. Sweet old carbine. Well, that was fun. <laughs> I've never, uh, I've never seen a piece break like this. Granted, I mean, I had a pretty bad catch in there, but it's, it's smooth right there. So there was something going on here anyways for that to be so damn smooth. Makes me wonder, should I continue with this piece? Am I just going to keep having that issue? We're, we're, we're going to epoxy this back in. And normally I would use wood glue, but when I'm looking at it, you're still going to see a crack. So I'm going to get some 5 minute epoxy and some kind of black dye and we'll actually try to accent that crack and then if I need to touch it up later I have the black star bond. But this way if I dye my epoxy at least, any squeeze out 
is already black. I ain't got to worry about having some black spots later and some not. So, anyways, enough of the jibber jabbering. <laughs> let me let me fix this. All right, ladies and gentle folk, we got the piece back on. There still is this chunk missing on this side, which is no big deal because I planned on turning this down smaller. Anyways, I don't like it when the top is as big as the base. Just to make sure there's some different dimensions within the piece itself, so. Alright, I'm going to try my smaller carbide and coming at more of an angle. Two reasons. For one, I'm going to concentrate on turning this very lightly like I am turning end grain. And two, it keeps me the hell out of the way. I don't know, honestly, if, if I'm speaking honestly, I, I kind of hate it. I'm too, my proportions are all wrong. It's too, too split in half. It can't get worse right now, so I'm going to bring the neck down, but keep it real wide and make it, I don't know. Let's see. Alright, I think I got a game plan now. I'm much happier with this proportion here. I think I'm going to leave this alone. I think if I keep messing with it, it's just going to get worse. I like the big bulbous and then nice and skinny. I hate this. And this is what was going to tie it into being a flower. I was going to undercut it, then try to make this look like petals. But everything's telling me that it's just not fitting with what we got going on here. And I'm not going to try to force it. I mean, the piece has been breaking off. It's catching any time I undercut it. Uh, basically, it's telling me that this looks like crap and I'm gonna listen to it so we're gonna cut this off we're gonna continue going skinny with a small flare here it'll be a flower pot <laughs> it's still got flour in it right so uh, that's what we're gonna go I I'm really excited I wanna I wanna do the ebonizing of mesquite because I don't think I've seen many people on YouTube ebonize mesquite and typically it ebonizes extremely well so my other plan is to ebonize this part down here and then leave this regular mesquite and then maybe ebonize the inside we'll see we'll see so that's my new game plan it's a flower pot it's got the word flower in it therefore i feel like it qualifies for the flower challenge if you disagree don't leave a comment below i just ignorance is bliss let's continue on with this thing and hope i don't kill myself Okay, so I'm with the shape I like. I was going to use my bowl gouge to try to get a final pass to smooth some of this out. But I forgot, I actually just got an actual spindle gouge. This is a Robert Sorby, I want to say 3 8 So why not test it out on a brand new project that I'm filming? Danger's my middle name. Right, no practice required. Let's see how I can screw this up. Not bad for literally the first time using it, I think. I know you experts out there probably disagree. Alright, so we're going to work on hollowing this out just a little bit down the neck as far as I can go. And get my calipers out and we'll see what kind of drill bit I can use to at least start out. I got a three quarter inch drill bit. So I'm going to drill it down as deep as I can comfortably feel like I'm, I'm not going to have the thing explode on me. And we'll see how far that is. If you wonder why I'm holding here, I'm letting the, the flutes of the drill bit bring out the sawdust. They will bring it out eventually, you just gotta give it time to work its way out. Alright, while I was drilling that out, I saw dust coming out of here, like there was poof coming out. It's like I got a strip over top of a core, is what it feels like. So what I'm going to do, because I don't want to put super glue and epoxy out here and then it's going to, you know, you're going to see it. It's going to stain it. I'm going to hollow this out just a little bit, just, just to where it looks even going down, basically. 
take a quarter inch off of the inside diameter and then I'm going to coat the inside with 5 minute epoxy at least down at the bottom I might leave the top front, uh, to where you can't see it and then maybe hopefully it will strengthen up this inside without actually having to see it on the outside so right now I need to worry about hollowing this out a little bit and I am going to use my little carbide I love this 8.9 millimeter carbide you can get this shaft and carbide for 35 bucks off of Amazon. I'll link it in the description. Uh, pretty good deal. You got to make your own handle, but it's not that hard, and you get to make it to a longer length if you want to. So, uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna swoop this on down in there. I'm actually gonna have to get my gouge to get any further. It's one bad downside of these carbides is if you got a tight area, well, you can see where it's burnishing there, where it's rubbing on. So, I might take that down later on. We'll see. Alright, we're going to sand, I don't know, I'll probably start at 120, hit it with 180, then we're going to go to ebonizing. I love this little box to keep my sanding pads in. One inch pads, accessories over here, and then you can keep your big stuff at the bottom. And this is all my super high grip pads. Nice little box, it's not too expensive. By work pro! Alright, starting off with... 120. Let's get it. Now I'm going to finish sanding down in this hole a little bit. Then I'm going to take the chuck off the lathe and we'll do the five minute epoxy down the middle. Just in case anybody's curious how I do sand inside these pots, this is a Harbor Freight emery cloth I usually. I usually keep three rolls of it in my shop, 80, 120, and 240. But you just got to make sure your rolls are going downwards. That way it doesn't catch when you're sanding. And just shove it on in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice and smooth. All right, that was 120 all around. I'm going to inspect closely. If I don't see any tool marks or scratches, I'm going to ebonize now. Alright, so I taped up the cracks that way if the ebonizing solution tries to bleed through, it doesn't. And I'm going to try to make a nice little line here. I might have to cut this back afterwards to get a nice crisp line. Now, I know this entire project, I've kind of been fumbling through it, but I do know a little something about this ebonizing. I know that oak ebonizes really well, mesquite ebonizes really well. You need to find any kind of wood that has a high tannin count. Because what this does is it somehow on the molecular level changes the tannin and turns the wood black. And that's it. That's all you do. Let it sit there. Let it dry. Alright. We do got a bunch of lines up here. I'm really surprised nothing came through here or here. Here I'm going to do a little groove here so I can hit a burn line here. And then probably whatever the lowest mark is. Probably right here. And then I might just let this dry overnight and come back tomorrow and scrape this. We'll see. I'm going to get my tailstock set back up as well. Got my balls right here. <laughs> Alright, so this is my little homemade rope burner thingy. We're going to do a little burning. All right, let's let it dry. All right, well, she's dry enough to see if we can get some of these black marks out. This, I think I should be, well, let's just forget the predictions. Let's just see what the hell happens. Okay, I mean, it's working because now these are the only two spots left down here and there was a lot more. Like I said, up here, I don't know if it's gonna work. Kinda wet. I'm spreading it around. You know what? It's late. I'm tired. I'm frustrated with this project. See y'all in the morning. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back about two days later. Uh, I live in Texas. We just had that big freeze, which everybody freaked out about. And, so cold. and cried about. Yes, we lost power for a while. Yes, we're okay. Might have some busted pipes when they finally thaw, but we'll survive. Anyway, so while the power was down, I did put some five minute epoxy in the center here. Uh, now, I'm just gonna try to scrape some of these uh, 
probably these here will try to get out and these ones up here are probably going to be stuck there forever. It's looking better. This still is up here. But you know what? I, I'm really, I really don't like this piece at all, so <laughs> I'm kind of tired of spending time on something I'm not enjoying. I'm not liking how it's going to come out. And like I said before, I don't want to put CA in these cracks because I don't think it's done moving. This was a pretty wet piece. We're going to do a little sanding. Alright guys, since I really don't like this piece, we're going to do a little bit of experimenting. Normally I would hit this with a lacquer just to make sure this ebon, this black doesn't bleed over. But uh, I got some uh, Super Blonde shellac here. And I mix up my own shellac much better than store bought. I'll leave a link in the description. Old World Shellac. Cool dude. We're going to let that dry. I'm going to hit it with another coat. And then I'm going to use a garnet colored shellac I'll show you on the black. So I'll bring you back when we're about to hit the black. Alright, so I got three coats on here. I did two coats and I needed to get a brush to get inside of these cracks. And then once I did that, I spread it out again. So I'll call it three coats of one pound shellac. If I didn't mention it, this is a one pound cut. Both, every, all the shellac I make is one pound cut. This is a garnet. And we're going to put this only on the black. I did this part first in case the black bleeds over. Hopefully the shellac kind of creates a barrier and it doesn't seep in. We'll see. Alright, I'll do that a couple more times and I'll bring you back when it's time to start using the sanding paste. Woohoo! Alright, we're all dried up. Three coats on the black, on the inside too. And uh, we're going to use the sanding paste. Now I'm not, I'm just going to do it all over so hopefully that shellac is sealed in the ebonized portion. And of course, like I always like to say, this is my homemade sanding paste. I do sell it on my Etsy store and it's a little thick right now because... We're having freezing temperatures. It's just like any sanding paste. You rub it in, turn it on, and work it around and rub it off. The only difference is that my sanding paste isn't extra fine. It is not as coarse as some of the others sold on the market. The reason I like to spread it out a whole lot is because if I don't, it's just going to fling it everywhere. Stand back when you start it up because it'll fling it at you. <laughs> Alright, looking pretty. I have to get my toothbrush and get some of that grit out of there. But, uh, not bad. It didn't get rid of too much of the ebonizing. You still see the grain through. Of course, it didn't soak, it didn't ebonize the sapwood as much as the, the heartwood. That's expected. Alright, next up, we got the tongue wax finish. Again, sold on my Etsy store. Tongue oil, pure tongue oil, carnauba wax, and beeswax. All blended up in a nice proprietary blend. I'm going to use a rag just because I don't want all the paper towels stuck in there again. If you use a rag, you just got to be a little more cautious. And also, by the way, I am working on another formulation of the tongue wax. Same ingredients, but different proportions to where I make it a little more oily. And it is meant to be used off of the lathe. You don't have to friction polish it in. The extra oil allows for better penetration. You know, without having to work it in like we do on a lathe. Still in the developing stages. A few people have their hands on it right now. They're doing some testing for me. As well as my own testing. Because during Christmas time, I found myself bogged down to where I needed to get projects off the lathe. Get the next one started. And I wanted a way to give projects a natural finish. Quickly while I was working on the next project. And so far it seems to be doing quite well. A more natural, natural look. It's, there's no shine to it at all. All right, we're gonna let that soak for about 15 minutes and uh, I'll come back and friction polish it off. All right, been about 15 minutes. I'm gonna spin this up, I don't know, I'm, I'm around a thousand RPM somewhere in there. And uh, we are gonna friction polish this on with the same rag we applied it with. That's basically what you're looking for. What I like the most about this is it gives me a longer lasting finish than something like Shine Juice. Anytime I use Shine Juice, it would last for two or three weeks, maybe a month, and then it would start to dull. I wouldn't get that same look. This, this will look exactly like it does now, six months from now. 
no problem. I have every confidence in the world telling you that. It's a nice little soft bristle brush that you get up in them in grooves and cracks. An electric one works well, and that's usually what I use, but my batteries are dead on it. This will work just as well. All right, that's about going to do it. You want to see me part her off, or you just want to skip to the end to where I can talk to you a little bit? Okay, all right, we'll do that. All right, guys, well, <laughs> I kind of hate it. I kind of, I kind of hate it. I don't know what it is about it. I just don't really... I don't think it's the worst thing I've ever turned, but it's definitely not the best. It, it's got the word flower in it. It's a flower pot. So uh, we'll, we'll call it my flower challenge entry. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed it. I was glad to get to show you all how well mesquite ebonizes. I don't think a lot of people think of mesquite when it comes to ebonizing. I know oak is well known or white oak is well known for ebonizing well. But mesquite, I think, takes it even better, which means it has a high tannin content inside the wood. The five-minute epoxy down on the inside did seem to help. Plus, if uh, anybody does want to put water in this, they would be able to. It's technically, you know, sealed up pretty good now. This isn't something I'm going to sell. I'm not proud enough of this to, to list it on Etsy. But, you know, it's something that can be around the house. I'll give it to one of my girls they'll play with it you know let me know what you think about this little flower pot do you love it do you hate it do you think it kind of does it kind of look like a piece of wood stuck inside of a tire either way this is my entry for the flower challenge for february for the youtube cross channel challenge hopefully march will be a little better we'll see anyways hit that like button hit that subscribe button y'all don't realize how much that helps small channels like us grow and, and sometimes hit the algorithm your comments your likes, your subscribes, if you share the video, that's huge, just to get new eyeballs on not only me, all the Turners, all these small channels out there. All right, y'all take it easy. Until next time. Peace.